All right, so welcome to our craft box design hours today. We're going to be discussing our 2023 design trends. Um, this will be a recorded session, so we'll uh, put the recorded session up on YouTube and then we'll link to social media. So hopefully by the end of today, we'll be able to, to do that for everybody. Um, there may be some people trickling in, um, but just wanted to to uh, give a, a big thank you to everybody who's participating and everybody joining today. Um, so with that being said, I'll go ahead and turn the time over to Mariana, who's going to be starting off with um, social media design and branding trends for 2023. And then we'll move on to Alexis um, and then uh, for, for web development and branding designs for 2023. And then I will close out with print and branding uh, trends for 2023. So, um, and it, then that'll be about 15 minutes. And then we'll, uh, the last 15 minutes, will just be questions and discussions. So um, thank you all for joining. And uh, the floor is yours, Mariana. Thank you, Pete. Sure. So I'm just going to share um, a resource I found. And it gives some pretty good examples, too. Mm -hmm. Okay, can everyone see my screen? Good. Cool. I'm just going to scroll back to the top, but I'm just going to go over eight trends. Um, they've been more popular in 2022, but we can expect to see them becoming even more popular in 2023. So the first trend that I'm going to talk about is going to be motion graphics. I'm sure you guys are all familiar with it already at this point. Um, so basically, video isn't really new. We're all pretty familiar with YouTube. Um, but with 2022, there's been more of a rise of um, video and like short form content. And what I mean by short form content is like shorter videos, kind of like Instagram Reels, for, for example. Um, you can see an example right here. It's actually just a screen grab from it, from TikTok. But what's great about motion graphics and what really sets them apart is, for example, in social media, if you're scrolling through your feed, it's actually just going to be a lot of static imagery, which is just regular social media graphics. Um, but if you're scrolling through and you see something that with some motion, it's going to catch your eye. So that's really what sets motion graphics apart. Um, it's in the timeline of static content. It does stand out. And then it's also just a good way for brands to communicate their brand um, further. Sorry, my video is lagging, so I turned my camera off. So the next trend that I'm going to go over is going to be bold abstract shapes. This is right here. So we have seen more of a rise with this in 2022, but we can expect to see more in 2023. Here are some really good examples. Um, so Spotify's one a lot lately um slack has also been doing that as well which is these two bottom graphics and the great thing about using the bold abstract shapes is it's just a really simple way to make your designs visually appealing without distracting from your message um especially if you use it combined with variety and contrast so with like colors and stuff. So you can definitely see that with like these two examples for Slack, for example, it doesn't take away from the message, but it does draw your eye to it. So that's going to be number two on the list. Let me just scroll through. And then, so these next three are, almost kind of hand in hand. So another rise that we can expect to see is 
AI generated art. So a lot of artificial intelligence. Um, in 2022, so far, there's been a lot of technological advancements. Um, there's a lot of softwares and programs that you can use now to create more complex designs um, with less effort, it's easier, and it is a bit more accessible now. So unfortunately, I'm not as familiar with AI generated art, but we are seeing that in like the NFT space. Um, there's actually like, this is like an, um, an AI generator. I believe it's just based off on a description. So there's been some already on social media, like this is AI generated. Um, here's like some more examples as well. And then some more. And then this one's actually AI generated as well. There's also some bigger platforms that are taking advantage of that. I believe Shutterstock is one of them. And then this brings me to my next trend, which is gonna be 3D elements. So I really love this saying right here. If motion graphics are the new static images, 3D renderings are the new 2D assets, which is pretty true. Um, again, it kind of goes hand in hand with that. There's been more technological innovations, so it's easier to create um, more complex designs and 3D falls under that category too. We, right here, we, we do see like a 3D render of IBM's logo, which is pretty neat. Um, Adobe's actually has a lot of programs where you can do that too. So with like After Effects, I think Chris is pretty familiar with that as well. You can create, um, you can work in like 3D spaces and create like 3D objects in there, which is pretty neat. Um, as well as like Illustrator. This is a really nice example that Adobe provided. This is, was for Adobe Max. We do see that 3D typography and this was created in Illustrator. So it just goes to show that it is easier to create this kind of stuff now. And then some more examples. I've also been seeing it with icons as well. And then characters as well has been a pretty big one. And then moving on to the next trend. So inclusive visuals is one we can expect to see some more. I know for me, I've seen it. Um, Alexis might have something to say about it, but I know for me, I've seen it some more on websites lately. Um, with inclusive visuals, it's kind of, there is this increased awareness now about some of the issues in society. So people are calling for, um, a more accurate representation in design as well. So we are seeing that in some of the designs for some of the bigger companies. So we have an example right here. Um, it goes with design, but it can also just go with like campaigns in general. So like we have one for TikTok right here as well. I know YouTube did something as well, Pinterest. So we can expect to see a lot of inclusivity in art in 2023. And then the next trend is going to be surrealist maximalism. So I think it's, I think it's hard to realize what it is when you first see it, but I'm sure you can think of examples after I go through it. Um, with this, you want to think about like psychedelic elements, um, just really pushing boundaries. So we have an example here from Behance. Um, I'd say it's really about pushing boundaries with visual elements while also getting your message across. It's really great for visual storytelling. Um, so there's actually a really nice example right here from Coca-Cola. So. I mean, it kind of speaks for itself. You would imagine that they'd want 
their audience to have this picture of the kind of experience you get drinking the drink and they created that so that's a good example um zoom is hopping onto that trend as well and then as far as also samsung is doing that too i don't know this company but here's another ad and then Adobe as well has been posting a lot of this kind of stuff. So we have some examples here. And then you also kind of want to think colorful, which brings me to the next trend, which is colorful retro illustrations. Um, in case you guys missed it, the 90s are back. Um, there's a lot of like vintage styles that are coming back and we're seeing in illustration and design, um, social media, of course, as well. So I thought this was a pretty funny example. So we do see like the bright colors, um, definitely like the vintage imagery. And then obviously this was like a trend for a couple of weeks. So this is a good example. Um, in this case, you just really want to think about bright color palettes and then just like a vintage style and what's nice about this is it takes visuals that were that we can consider pretty old but it translates it translates them into the current day which is pretty neat so we also have some bigger companies like mtv that's hopping on board a couple other examples and then I will make my way to the last trend, which is virtual reality. Again, this kind of goes hand in hand with the technological innovation that's been going on. Um, really what companies are doing with virtual reality is they're showcasing their forward thinking sensibilities. So, in, in the sense of design, a lot of them are illustrating that they're hyper-connected, um, that they're innovative. So we're, we are seeing this kind of like trend with this kind of style for virtual reality. So like this Apple ad, for example, we do see like those liquid neon gradients and then also like 3D components is another one too. You kind of want to think like futuristic as well. So we also have this one for like meta. And then there's actually a video that's really great. A really great example. It's a minute. I can show it really quick. Um, and it actually shows a lot of the trends that we can expect to see in 2023 as well. So I'll just play this really quick. To a world where you are not constrained by time, nor space, not forced to play by the rules. Things are different. You have the speed to be anywhere or everywhere, the power to create worlds at a whim, the present to capture the attention of masses with a single post. You will discover the curious, the implying, the strange, the wonderful, and find no boundaries save for those set by your own imagination. Get unrivaled performance for everything you do with the fastest chip we've ever built, the 13th gen Intel Core processors. Welcome to a world that you define. How wonderful is that?
Yeah, so that was a really good example. Um, and it's also really good. I think one of the other trends too that we're seeing just in general is just creating really immersive experiences. So I'd say that's a good way to put it, but that's all I have. Thank you. I'll pass it on to whoever's next. Sure. Thanks, Mariana. That was really neat. I like seeing a lot of those examples. Um, and yeah, I have been seeing a lot of those um, new like websites and just um, advertisements and stuff like that. Let's see. Um, so before I share the trends really quick, I did want to share just some like examples in general um, of websites. So kind of just like the layout and stuff, just to kind of give you guys an example um, of things to look out for. So, you know, how are you going to implement these trends in general when you're building a website? So here's just some examples. Um, I do have like Craigslist, Craigslist for example. Um, so you see it's like very cluttered with links. The layout's very just static and it's never been really updated in general. Um, Yale School of Art, um, I guess it works for like an artistic type of view if that's the kind of style you're going for. I don't know if this is like an up-to-date version, um, but it was the last time I checked. Um, and things to kind of just look out for would be like, you know, oversaturated colors, the layout, the fonts. Um, those are things you want to look out for with your website as well, um, just because that can get confusing for people or people that have like um, certain visual problems, this might be kind of um, hard for them to see. Um, so those are just two examples. And then let me share the other link. So I did come across um, this page on the uh, 99design dot com page which is kind of neat um so for number one i won't go through all of them but i'll just pick a few that i like um again you see um a combination of going back to like animated animated features for products for example um so i'll press this really quick so you can just see there are like small little features where if you hover over an image they kind of animate and change which is kind of neat they're not really drastic features, but they're features enough that, you know, catch the audience's eye. And then there's some other really neat ones down here. So again, with like the products, there's a lot of visuals where they're combining, you know, gradients that kind of go back with like the 3D features, but then playing with the typography and the layout for branding as well. I'm using a lot of that um, in combination with like websites. Um, the parallax zoom scrolling. So that's been really neat um, the past couple of years, but um, it's a little more in depth now. So that's going to be one of them. And again, it just gives a little more interactive features for the audience. Here's some other examples. I believe this was for yeah, that one. Um, so again, also playing back with um the illustration, the colorfulness, the gradients, um, combining kind of like a collage photo experience with um the layout. And then also going back to the 90s, that came out on here too, which was kind of neat. Um, so you can see how they integrated that with like the logo and the menu and then the buttons and and just like the whole experience for this website, which is really neat. And then some more examples. There's also this kind of scrapbook aesthetic. Um, this was already kind of seen this past year, um, but it's a little more in depth now, I guess, for the next following year as well. So it's kind of like, again, going back to like the DIY kind of stuff. So kind of having like physical, with like a digital kind of element, which is really nice. So combining photo and illustration and typography, and then kind of like this like modern versus like new clashing with the colors, which is really fun. And I think that gives like a great um, chance for like a lot of like illustrators who are not really 
familiar with web development, but they want to, you know, combine their skills with, you know, maybe their portfolio page or something, um, which is really neat. So that gives them a chance to show their work in their web design. And here's some more examples. And kind of just like fun placements and layouts and kind of stepping out of the boundaries a little bit. And then overlapping text with photos and then, you know, changing the characters and the sizing is kind of nice. And then kind of playing with like these overlay images with colors. And then I thought this was kind of neat as well too, even though um, it's number eight, uh, the typographic layout. So typography is always kind of like a mix between like old and new. Uh, but it's really nice to kind of see that it's still continuing on to 2023 trends, um, you know, and they're kind of showing here, you know, how they're bringing it back in a way and kind of, you know, continuing on with that, which is really nice. And, you know, kind of using like different um, like directions and and like strokes and widths and weights and, you know, combining that with like photos again and, you know, just making it work and making it bold and you know, catching the viewer's eye, which is really nice. So it's kind of nice to see that um, continuing and seeing how bo like bold it is. And, you know, that's really nice. And here's some more examples. And I think this is really good too, again, going back for like illustrators who want to combine with their web design skills, because this is really neat. And then again, you can always use that for mock-ups and layouts. And here's just some more examples, kind of like the playing around with the text. And I think that was it for me. Um, that's pretty much everything I wanted to show for this page. Um, I'll also add it in the chat for everybody in case they want to look at it. Um, but the, I think overall in general, just doing like the research, depending on, you know, what, what it is that you're trying to look into is really neat. And, you know, putting your own personal style into the uh, web development side it always nice um, and it helps the audience kind of build like this personal connection with you which is really neat awesome thank you yeah. both uh, Alexis and Mariana those are awesome presentations um, I'm going to go ahead and uh, share my screen now and then we'll open it up for questions um, we'll try and leave maybe five ten minutes for questions at the end and if you have to jump off at eleven thirty, that's okay um, but just wanted to um, let you guys know that we will have some Q&A at the end of this. So I'm going to go ahead and share my screen. And hopefully you guys can see this. Um, a lot of the stuff in print and um, digital, um, both web and um, digital branding, like social media, um, a lot of these are, are very similar. Uh, we talked about minimalism, um, lots of typography, and these are just some of the trends that we'll go over in just a minute here. Um, but you'll see a lot of crossover between the two. So um, I thought this was a good example. I'm going to go ahead and make my screen just a little bit bigger. Um, I thought this was great. And and I'm just a, a, a kind of a nut for um, really great print designs. And um, this just looks really cool and clean and different. Um, it's a nice way to send out an invitation, which I thought was cool. Um, you'll see a lot of typography here. Um, there's a lot of, I think now more than ever, having something to, to be able to feel is really good. And then this is also like vintage too, right? Like we're kind of going back in that, um, that trend of going vintage. Um, and let me go ahead and show you just a few more examples here. Um, photographic branding, um, you know, we talked about that. Things are, you have to be very quick and to the point. Um, people don't wanna like wait five minutes to figure out what your whole ad campaign is. Um, I bet you anything that the, if you pay attention to the commercials for the Super Bowl, they're gonna be like probably shortened by, if you watch the Super Bowl, you may not, um, but they're, 
they'll probably be shortened by at least two or three seconds um, shorter than last year, just because people want to move fast. And, and if they're not interested in what's on TV, they'll just find something on the phone, right? Like um, I've definitely done that when, when, you know, uh, we had like a couch date or something and we were watching some, you know, a movie or something and I kind of get bored with it. Um, I easily will, will, and I try not to do this very much, but it's very easy. I'm easily tempted just to go on and look at some really cool art videos, you know, if it's on Instagram. So, um, being very quick, uh, and, and to the point is great. Um, using your brand colors within your branding. Um, you can see Ikea doing this with their photography, same thing with PayPal, right? So, um, just different ways to use technology. Um, and then we also talk about sans serif. Uh, this is a, I've never shied away from sans serif. It's actually one of my favorite um, uh, areas of, of typography that I like to really um, go into. And it's modern. I know people might've been overloaded on it for a while, but I think for our branding at Arrowhead Center, it works really well. Um, we've definitely used some serif fonts as well, typefaces, but as you can see here, this is a really nice, um, really nice packaging. It's toilet paper, but hey, it's like, it's clean, right? Um, which is what we all want, right? <laughs> We're using toilet paper. So it's a good, it's a good use of, of the packaging. It's environmentally friendly. Um, I, I really like the thickness and the boldness of this, this typeface as well. Um, but yeah, these are, these are good examples of of um, great ways to use typefaces um, and the upcoming trends of these sans serif futuristic fonts and, and typefaces, very modern, right? They're not gonna go out of style. Um, very rich in colors as well. And you can tell we're on a, a UK site because they spell colors a little different than us, but um, you know, you'll see kind of that periwinkle violet color and we'll talk about the color trends here in just a minute um but great use of color bold color right doing things that are a little different than we did in the past that we're maybe we're not being so safe uh distorted type i know uh one of the presentations earlier featured type as well i think both of them did um and how we distort type which is you know, we have rules that we can break sometimes um, in graphic design. This is one that's a, like you're taught in school, like, oh, don't do this. Don't stretch this. Now people are stretching their typeface. So it's kind of it's kind of interesting. And, and you know, it, it's curious to me. It's, it's fascinating just to see what people can do. And um, I don't know if you take a look at Helvetica, look what they did. The F, the A, um, it's definitely different. Um, I like it actually. <laughs> I would like to have a poster of this just to like kind of you're, you're breaking the norms. Um, so these are some good examples of, of uh, distorted typefaces. Um, very similar to what everyone's already talked about before. Um, you know, very bold colors. This uses liquid gradients. So this is kind of a neat, um, a neat feature that we're kind of diving into now. Um, it almost has that you guys have seen Blade Runner, like the first one. Um, I'm seeing a lot more things on Instagram and then other things that are kind of referencing back into the like 80s, 90s. Um, so I think that's pretty interesting. Um, and this is packaging in print, right? This is really neat package uh, package design. So very bold. Um, and I'll, I'll post a link here as well. So if you guys want to have it for your own records, you can. Um, flared fonts as well, right? We have like um, a little bit different um, R's, you know, in within the word border. Um, it's definitely different than what you would expect. Um, and it looks nice for logos, for magazine headlines. Um, they're really fun, friendly. Um, and that, look how nice it looks with all this branding. So, um, there should be like that purple I was referencing here in a minute in there, probably just passed right there. Um, so we'll keep kind of going down here. I won't go through every single font here. And then we have the whole metaverse, right? Um, like the whole futuristic, the matrix. And I think that Mariana hit on it perfectly. 
um, with going, you know, you're in this crazy universe. And ever since we've been like uh, home, you know, um, and, and I think many of us are working from home. Um, some of us go in the office on, on occasion, uh, but for the most part, we kind of have our spaces where we feel comfortable, our safe spaces. Um, and so you get to see everything that's possible. Um, she also, Mariana, talked about NFTs. Um, and then we have this really cool um, kind of different type or, or, or feel on logos, right? Making things more sci-fi based. Um, we want to escape reality, right? It's kind of, it's nice to do. Um, condensed typography, that's also um, a nice touch. And knowing when to use it too is, is great because you don't want an entire paragraph to be all condensed, right? You want it to be readable, legible. Um, but this is a really nice ad from, from Bugatti. I think they did a great job there. And it looks nice. And so if you do things right, I guess my, my point is if you do things right, you don't necessarily have to, um, I mean, you can move on from a trend that's going on, right? Um, but if you create a good, strong logo or a good, strong brand, um, you don't necessarily have to pivot all the way out of, from what you just did, right? Like hopefully it lasts and it should be timeless. And so um, these are really cool. And if you look at this this typeface, this is a really good example of stretching things, right? Of stretching the font, breaking some rules, right? Having uh, the arm kind of go through the typeface. I, I, I'm a sucker for like flat design and I love 3D design too, but I really like the way this looks, you know, um, I, you know, these are very bright, powerful colors, um, black and white photography also, um, kind of back as well. So, um, that's in a nutshell what I have. And then what I wanted to do, um, let me go ahead and copy this link for you. I will stop my share and then I'll put that in the link. And I will also show one last thing, um, there we go. And I'll share my screen and we'll take a look at the color trend. So if you can see my screen here, it is just a big blob of kind of like that digital lavender periwinkle um, that those are, you can read more about it, but this is just a quick article on it and what it's going to be doing uh, next year. Um, but it's supposed to be the color of the year. Um, according to these sources, and, and I've done my research and many people are saying that it will be the color of the year. So if you do, um, and maybe there's a way to work it into our Arrowhead branding, like maybe on social media, just to like throw hints of it in there um, if we can. I think that's one of the things that oftentimes, um, you know, we can, we can struggle with, right? Because we don't want to get off brand, but you also want to um, be able to pivot in in a good direction and actually show that you're in tune with what's current so um so yeah that's that's kind of that's that's what i have so i think now we can kind of just open it up for discussion um maybe we'll do five minutes of discussion or so and then we'll we'll close it out so does anybody have any comments or questions you guys are a quiet group um, I do, I do have some, some comments here and, and I, I really enjoyed you guys' presentations, by the way, it was nice to see, um, it's refreshing. We're at this point in the year where we're about almost done with 2022, right? We're like, all right, that's in the bag. Let's move on to 2023. And it's nice to have some inspiration too, but I'd also say, you know, take time and, and, and make sure that you, um, you you realize how impactful the work that you've done. Everybody here in this group has worked for Arrowhead Center or is currently working for Arrowhead Center. So I think that's a that's a really cool um, thing to note that you all came from Arrowhead and um, and have contributed so much to it. Um, so um, if we had if we had others joining today, that would be great. But but it's great to great to see everyone. Um, I I really. I'm curious about, you know, I'm, I'm not a visual, uh, virtual, I'm, I am a visual person, but I'm not a virtual reality designer. So I'm curious to see how do you guys think that's going to work it, there, its way into like 
designing for smartphones, you know, um, devices and the web? Like, do you think that there will be a jump in that? Do you think that there'll be, there'll have to be an upgrade in computers, you know, down the line to show that? I guess those are some of the questions that I'd have. How, how do you guys see that taking shape and form? I think the 3D animation and like the 3D kind of even like what Mariana was saying for like social media, I think it's going to become a lot bigger with like the metaverse and everything. So I went to, well, I didn't go to, but like I did the virtual classes on the Adobe Max in October. And a lot of the things that they were talking about that were coming out um, had to do with like 3D and what like Adobe is going to be doing to kind of keep up with the whole 3D and like some of their um, programs like Adobe Substance. Um, so they were actually doing like the 3D um, animation and they were doing it with like the VR. And I don't know, that was kind of cool when I when I looked through that, but I realized like that's going to be more like the standard in graphic design is a lot more a 3D design because um, they were also doing it where you can do like photos and like um, illustrator images and turn them into like the 3D images as well. So like they did a, a 3D backpack and then they had like a, a vector image from Illustrator and they put it on the backpack and they made it look like it was stitched onto the backpack oh, through wow. Adobe Substance. So it was like really cool kind of to see, but like I feel like a lot of that's going to integrate and come together and it's going to be more standard, I think. Well, I'm I'm taking notes right now. So if you hear my keyboard going, um, so that would be a cool one to, to look into and maybe we can do that for a future workshop is doing like an Adobe Substance workshop where either um, we bring someone in or if, if we are, if, you know, we get very familiar with it, we'll do a demo on it. I think that would be, that's always good to learn more. And so I think that's great. Yeah, I think that one would be cool because I saw a lot of it like at the Adobe Max conference and it kind of like piqued my interest a little bit and it seemed really, really cool kind of to play with and work with. Yeah, I think that'd be fun. And And how many times have you been asked for like, um, you know, if you've gotten a request from a client that says, Hey, can you show me how this would look on a shirt? Like, okay. I mean, you can do the Photoshop work. You can overlay like threading and stitching, but if you have a program that can take a logo and make it look stitched in like three seconds and do it for you, that makes things a lot easier. Right. So I think, I think that's something to think about too. Um, how yeah, because it looked like a patch, like they changed it to look like an actual patch. So I think for like, even like if they want to see, like I know for Ginger, she wanted to see what it would be like on the um, stitch on like the shirts and stuff. So I think that'd be cool to kind of show her too. Yeah, I think that's a great, that's a great example. Awesome. Any other comments or questions? Thank you for that, Chantel. Yeah. Chris, Dylan. Yeah, um, I had a couple. Sure. Thoughts. One is more of an observation. Um, I thought it was interesting how um, with your presentation, you were um, on that website. Um, yeah, the, the, there's a um, distorted type is very, is very in right now and it's really cool. But then if you look at a lot of like that Bugatti ad, they go completely opposite with like the plain text. Um, type you know it's it's kind of weird that they're both considered to be in right now um in style but they're so opposite it's kind of you wonder which way to lean yeah i think that's it's really interesting um and then the other thing was that i'm actually kind of worried about our fields in general like with the new ai um, generators like Dolly 2 and everything that there's a, an interesting video I watched on it on graphic design um, it's actually pretty scary how easy it is for people to just type in a, a couple um, keywords and then get almost exactly or better than what we can do and that's only growing more do you think that we have a we're all going to be replaced or be doing the um, the AI font or the typing in just keywords instead of doing actual graphic design and all that. You know, that's a great point. Um, and I've been, I, I don't think, 
And this is going to, I mean, maybe I sound dated, but I, I honestly don't think that we'll be replaced. Um, I think that I can totally understand how you would feel that way. Um, yeah. I, I've, I've kind of been in that situation myself, but I, I do, it's kind of like if you go through um, a company or, or like one of these websites that generates a logo for you, right? Um, they might look all right, but I think that's the thing is there's no human brain behind it. Like it's just basically generating a lot of stuff from algorithms and collecting data and information. And maybe it's doing some of the thinking. Um, but we've had clients where they've done something like that and then brought it to us and been like, you know what? We like what you did better. Um, this was yeah. just to get us started, but this is way better. Like you really thought outside the box and you have to almost think like how many people are going to be doing the same thing getting the same so then that uniqueness and creativity i don't think that's that's always going to be in the human brain like um it's it's in our minds to be creative so a machine is not going to be able to rob you of that now being able to understand it i think is really good to do and and to know okay hey this is kind of my competition like you're going to have people that are like, well, why should I go? And I'll just, I'll just use this scenario of why should I go to a, um, you know, um, a mechanic when I can just go to Pep Boys and they're not necessarily mechanics there. No knock on Pep Boys. I mean, they have great stuff, but as far as like actual automotive service and things like that, that, that is not going to be the same as having it like a certified mechanic that can actually diagnose what is going on with your car. Um, case in point that happened with us and we took the car in and had the radiator replaced and it wasn't diagnosed correctly. And then like two weeks later it was dead. The car was just done. Right. So we had to get a new car. Um, had we taken it to a mechanic and figure things out, I think we ended up taking what taking it there, but it was too late. Like there was so much electrical stuff going on. It all could have been avoided. Right. And I think, um, I don't know. I, I think we live in a society where things are so instantaneous. Um, everybody wants it now. Like, I don't know with, you can get whatever you want sent to you in two days, you know, and people are going to get to the point where they don't even want to wait for that. Um, and and great great uh, point there, Alexis. I, I see in your comment. You're right. Um, we are also able to create the client's vision. Um, I, I don't know. I mean, it's kind of like telehealth, where it might be useful for some things, right? Um, especially if you can't get to a doctor and you know, and like they can kind of diagnose your symptoms. But if you have something like something really crazy you need to go to a specialist for it right like you can't just be like oh man like i can't walk on my on my foot i better go i'm just going to do an urgent care telehealth visit like no you need to actually go somewhere so they can diagnose take x-rays take a look at your foot um there's still we still need that human brain um to be able to you know help with with the whole concept right um of all creativity but yeah I, I totally understand i mean we were at a conference and they were like it kind of freaked everybody out because it was a package design conference and one of the presenters was just like you'll see there'll, there'll be no um no point in having like really colorful great graphic design unless it's a super high-end product and because everybody's going to be doing Amazon, you'll see. And we all were like, oh, crap. Like he's kind of calling for the death of like package design, which maybe in some of like the the more affordable brands has probably gone that way. But now when you, I don't know, I, I wouldn't want to buy a box or like buy some shoes that doesn't have the, that are poorly designed, right? Like a bad design box. Because I'd feel like, well, it's cool. The shoes look cool, but it's all about the experience, right? Um, and whether it's digital um, or on a print, you know, material, or even virtual, like, I think that's the thing is virtual designers still need to be able to 
design you know like they if you're doing motion graphics um or if you're doing if things are just still made easy i mean you're right people can pick up and then grab an app like canva right canva is like a perfect example which no knock on it however and it's for it's almost for non-designers right that want to just get something done and put something out there and they can do it on their own. That's great. Um, but I can't even tell you how many times I've had, we've had to redo things that have been done in Canva. They're like, oh, well, we actually can't put bleeds on that in Canva. Oh, we can't actually left align this or, you know, we're, we're not able to do the same things that you can do on your computer with a an ad or a website. Um, so there's a custom, the custom ability, I guess, that's, um, that goes missing when everything is robotic. Does that make sense? I'm sorry. I kind of went on a little tangent there, but, um, and if you, if you don't agree with me, that's cool too, but I just, that's my own personal opinion on it. Um, and that's kind of yeah. where I'm coming from. There's like the doomsdayers camps where they're thinking that all graphic design is going to be replaced by AI. And then there are uh, the camp where they're thinking you know human creativity isn't going to be overtaken and then there's the middle ground where they're thinking all or almost all graphic designers are going to be the ones running the programs because uh, there was an interesting video where they had an amateur and an actual graphic design artist um, both use one of the ai programs i think it was dolly too um, and then they had people vote on them, like using social media, and the the actual artist blew the amateur out of the water. You know, so it's yeah. just a way of thinking you can use your the program to its maximum potential. I'm thinking yeah. that's probably how it's going to be. And it, exactly, and I think that they'll find a way to integrate it into like the Adobe software, where you're kind of it helps to think for you to a degree, but you still have to come up with the initial idea. Um, yeah. and I'm, I'm, I'm not like, no, I just do everything by draw it first. And I mean, I, I still love, I love to draw, but, um, shoot when the iPad came out and then sketchbook pro came out, you know, I, I was, I thought about it. And for a minute I was like, well, I really want my daughter to know how to draw on paper. So she did, she learned how to draw on paper, but she can also use her iPad too, to draw, which is another it's it's just another medium and i almost kind of feel like all this new technology is it's a tool rather than hindering you so so yeah i think you're right chris it'll be something where it just gets worked into your workflow and yeah. and helps you um you know if you look at the not just with graphic design but with just programs in general like everyone is in some kind of a workflow project management um, you know, we do it with monday.com others, um, you know, they just use different, different, uh, tools for, uh, for work, work, uh, pro work project management, things like that. So, um, it's just technology is just growing and it's fascinating to watch and, and it can be kind of scary though. Like, it's like, well, how fast are we moving? Right. But I think if we, integrate it correctly within our this video is sponsored by on shape with oh no you're good um within our you know within our own you know lives whatever we're doing i think we'll be in that much better of a situation just being able to adapt is is good but but yeah i mean that that is a great question um uh, like... i'm thinking a video uh, if anyone's interested in learning more about it it's just this uh, designer that he has like really good insight about this kind of thing um, about the new emerging AI. Oh, it's cool. yeah, you can so yeah, put that in the link. Awesome. Um, yeah, well, I will watch that later today. But um, I I also really appreciated Alexis's presentation. I thought you really hit on how the you know the elongated typeface of the. Um, the the distorted types uh, typefaces are making their way into the web as well and that's probably really tricky because um to make more web friendly fonts do that kind of stuff is pretty amazing when it comes to web web can be 
um, used to be very limited. And now um, it's really kind of, you can do all kinds of cool stuff with web. So different plugins, different um, platforms, you don't have to use WordPress. Um, you can use all kinds of different, different platforms, but um, there's all kinds of different ways to, to do these creative things that we want to do in our field, right? Like you don't have to, one, one way will not work for everyone. You kind of have to find your own way. And so I think that's the beauty of everything is you can take something that's trending and kind of work it into what you're doing. And um, there's not, I had an instructor once say, there's, there's more than one way to do things. You don't have to do it exactly like I did it. And I was like, oh, you don't. And so, you know, if you find another way to do it, that works, then that's great too. So anyways, I will stop. I will stop rambling, but are there any other uh, questions or comments? I, I think they've all been great. Awesome. I'm gonna go ahead and stop the recording. So thank you all for joining. Um, we will post this up on YouTube. So anyone that was not able to join today virtually can watch and uh, and learn. So thank you all very much. I'm gonna go ahead and stop the recording.